While the 2022-2023 football season officially ends today on Super Bowl Sunday, for many sports betting fans, college hoops in February and March is one of the most exciting times in sports. Whether you love college hoops or just want to pad your bankroll heading into March Madness, we have the perfect special. Starting today, get the rest of February with any wager talk or sports memo handicapper for only $149 each. So to finish off February for as little as $9 per day, head over to your favorite wager talk and or sports memo handicappers page and grab this limited time offer. This offer includes not only college basketball, but also any NBA, NHL, UFC, soccer, golf, and NASCAR that your favorite wager talk and or sports memo expert handicaps. No coupon is needed. The earlier you sign up, the more days you get. Welcome. It's Friday, February the 17th, and this is Wager Talk TV, and this is the College Basketball Happy Hour Tip-Off Show, and we're on every weekday, Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and of course, archived 24-7 right here on YouTube on Wager Talk TV, and don't forget about the Wager Talk TV mobile app for your favorite device. Watch us on the go all day and night. Also, quick reminder, there will be more college basketball talk tomorrow on Saturday. Wager Talk Last Call, one of the newest shows here on the network, We'll be on at 11 a.m. Eastern Saturday morning and then replayed throughout the day as well. So once again, if you want to get some last-minute talk for Saturday college basketball, be sure to check back on Saturday morning. But we're talking Friday night college hoops. I'm going to do it with two of the best at wagertalk.com. Tony Mejia, Mejia in the middle, and also Jimmy Adams exploring the universe. And Tony, I'll start with you. It's a little bit of a light card for Friday in college hoops like always, but it's an important Friday night because there is no NBA regular season action for the next week. So... Not a bad time to maybe dig in and make some money with college hoops. Yeah, basically the only show in town unless you want to ride the uh, Rising Stars Challenge. I don't believe that there are lines on the celebrity game. (laughs) So uh, I actually gave out a free play on uh, on what I think is the biggest game tonight uh, is Yale and and Penn. Uh, But, I mean, there's a lot of good games tonight. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about three of them. And uh, Yale and Penn is one of them. And then and, uh, Tony, tomorrow, I, I guess, you, we're you on did, last, last call, all three of us. Yeah, as I, said, I believe you did a little bit of uh, all-star talk on Wager Talk today earlier as well. So I invite people to go back and watch the uh, replay here on Wager Talk TV, Wager Talk Today with Prez and Teddy. Wasn't a Prez-free zone, but I still recommend watching it because Tony gave some good information. And uh, yeah, Tony and Jimmy Adams, you'll be both on the show tomorrow along with myself, Steve Merrill. So check out that last call show on Saturday morning. And Jimmy, uh, Friday night college hoops, still some money making opportunities on Friday. Yeah, uh, light card, but uh, I found one game that I really like. It is a client play and I'm going to be giving it out on the show. So no uh, packages up for today, but we'll be locked and loaded for tomorrow and college basketball continues to roll uh 70 percent last 10 on a nice four and one run we did split a pair of five percenters recently which i'm a little bit disappointed about but uh overall just steadily uh making money and uh, we're going to talk some games today and have a great show and don't forget we can still get that rest of february special for each and every capper at wagertalk.com for just 149 you know normally a seven day is 99 you're getting the rest of the month for just 50 dollars more and that's available for both tony jimmy and myself steve merrill no promo code needed the rest of february all sports every day for just 149 might not be a bad time to get on board tonight on friday get to friday night plays including of course a huge saturday right around the corner in college hoops we're going to talk about one of the late night games here to start off one of the biggest games on the board tonight and that's actually the national tv game at 10 30 eastern on cbs sports network new mexico at san jose state and uh, Tony, New Mexico, San Jose State opened as a pick but we have seen some money come in on the home team. San Jose State now minus one and a half, even a minus two out there in some locations. A little bit of a sharp money move on San Jose State today. Total has dropped from 145 and a half down to 143 and a half. Uh, Tony Mejia, do you agree with those moves? Do you see any value in this game? Well, I, I see the Spartans have already pulled one upset this week, uh, beating UNLV on, uh, what was it? Or, 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 well, earlier this week, 
65, 66, they they are uh, on the verge of their second three game winning streak in in uh, a few weeks. So, I mean, really not a team that has uh, had a lot of success this season. This would be only their third three game winning streak of the season. But uh, you know, playing well, they beat Utah State. Utah State is obviously no slouch. Um, a three point shooting team that relies on 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 the uh, three ball probably more than they should, but they beat them 69-64 uh, and then uh, defeated UNLV by nine. So I could see why they're favored at home. New Mexico obviously had a great run earlier in the season, but uh, has slowed down of late. So uh, we, we'll see if they were able to bounce back tonight. I mean, do I agree with the move? No, I don't. I think um, New Mexico is the better team. They just have to get acclimated to a road atmosphere if they're going to win this game. Yeah, Jimmy, the correlation of the move definitely makes sense, though, because San Jose State's one of the 15 slowest teams in the country, 348 right now in tempo, and New Mexico, 27th fastest team. So the fact that the money's coming on San Jose State at home and the under, I would think those are somewhat correlated bets maybe. Uh, do you think this will be a slowdown half-court game, or can New Mexico speed them up on the road? I do think it'll be a slow game, Joe, or, uh, Steve, excuse me. And uh, what in the world's going on with New Mexico, right? A team that had such a fantastic start to the season has now dropped four straight and five of six. Their only win since January 20th was to a bad Air Force team, and then they went on the road to lose to them uh, later on. Um, so with the sudden crash, it's not a huge surprise. UNM's now dropped five straight against the spread. And their last two games, they've failed to cover by 23 and 17 and a half points against two of the worst teams in the conference, Air Force and Wyoming. Then you look at San Jose State, and they're having a great year for their standing for their standards. They just uh, overtook UNM in the uh, standings. Uh, the Spartans are going to need to get it done on the defensive end. They're far from an offensive juggernaut. But they are 10-2 and two at home, and they've won three of their last four overall. And then check this out, Steve. When you look at their recent home games, you're going to find a win over Utah State, the best three-point shooting team in the nation, a 20-point win over Wyoming, a 30-point win over Air Force, and a 10-point win over Fresno. Uh, that's their last four home games. They covered the spread by a pretty wide margin in all those games. Uh, the only way to play this game for me is uh, to fade New Mexico and play San Jose State. Uh, on the money line, you don't want to get uh, beat by that, uh, you know, half point or whatever. So San Jose State's the right side, in my opinion. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, guys. These teams played the uh, first meeting was January 17th. New Mexico's slide really began after winning that game. Uh, they've only won two straight up, five losses, but they've gone just one in six ATS since beating San Jose State. And 77-57, um, it did stay under 143 and a half in that game. Um, and San Jose State was just terrible shooting the ball, 33.5% from the field, actually 33.9%. Um, what's interesting, though, Jimmy, is you mentioned the Wyoming Air Force losses recently, and those are two slowdown teams, Wyoming 284, Air Force 350. They're even slower than San Jose State. So two ways to look at it. New Mexico's obviously struggled in slowdown game teams recently, but they've also played two of them, so it's the third time a charm. Are they more used to it? But the last undefeated team in the country earlier this year was New Mexico, and they're definitely struggling right now. And that game, once again, is at 1030 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. All right, Tony Mejia, you talked about a game you liked earlier. You thought it was the biggest game of the night. So we'll look at an earlier Ivy League game here, and that is Yale at Penn, University of Pennsylvania. And uh, this game is actually on ESPN News. I always love when they put a game on ESPN News. Not sure why they had to do that tonight on such a light car, but they're making space for this one. Yale at Penn at 7 o'clock Eastern. And uh, currently, we're looking at the live Wager Talk odds screen, and Yale is a three-point favorite across the board after opening as a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Totals dropped a teeny bit, 143-and-a-half down to 142-and-a-half. Uh, Tony Mejia, tell us why you like this game tonight. Well, Penn has won five straight, and Penn and, Penn and Yale are right there uh, with Princeton as, uh, as the class of the Ivy League. And the Ivy League's pretty good this year. Like, I, I don't know if anybody has really, you know, taken notice of it, but uh, Cornell is really good, um, you know, really fun to watch. Like, all these teams are really fun to watch. Uh, Princeton has a, a great playmaker out of Great Britain. I, I was I was kidding with uh, 
with with Brad's, I'm like, you can't pronounce this guy's name. And now, like now, his name escapes me. So it is what it is. Um, but Penn has won five consecutive games, basically. So bottom line, they beat Harvard twice within the span of uh, a few weeks. Uh, Harvard is not as good as they normally have been, uh, but for the most part, like still a still a, a challenging opponent. They beat Cornell. He's frozen. Frozen they in have time. Jordan Dingle. Say what? Are you back? You, you froze on us, Tony. You back? Oh, okay. My bad. I I, I, I can't tell. All right, jo- but yeah, Jordan Dingle, who uh, who whose dad is Dana Dingle, who uh, played on the UMass team that made the Final Four. Like he he's uh, he's a very talented player. Leads the Ivy League in scoring. Um, I mean, this this is going to be a heck of a game. Uh, to see who can rise up to challenge for Yeah, and this is a rematch, Jimmy, from an earlier meeting this season on January 21st, about three weeks ago, almost four weeks ago, in which Yale won 70-63 to 63 at home as a seven-point favorite, landed right on the closing line. What jumps out to me in that game, though, Jimmy, is that Yale shot just 39% from the field. They were actually outshot 46-39% to 39% and still won the game by seven, which is pretty unusual. The reason... Uh, both teams actually made 10 threes. The difference was they were 12 for 15 from the free throw line. They got there more often, made more of the shots. They also only had five turnovers, really took care of the ball. Um, how do you see this rematch playing out? As Mejia mentioned, uh, 10 red hot right now, five straight wins, four and one ATS their last five. Yeah, Penn is hot, but uh, I mean, so is Yale. Two teams playing very good basketball meet up as Yale heads to Philly, right? Um, so the Bulldogs have won six straight. They've covered, covered the number in four consecutive games with Three of those four coming by double digits. Meanwhile, as mentioned, Penn's put together a nice five-game winning streak of their own. The main difference I see here is on the defensive end because Penn ranks 238th in the nation in points per game allowed, while Yale comes in at number 13 in the same category. Yale, 14th in defensive efficiency versus D1 schools. Penn, 236th. Um, Yale can also crash the boards at both ends of the floor. Um both teams are pretty good at rebounding, but the Quakers' liability on defense is going to be the difference here. Um, I just think uh, Penn is unbackable. Yale's the better team. I'm not giving that much edge for a home court advantage. I think Yale uh, wins and covers, Steve. Yeah, once again, they're only shooting 39% of the first meeting and still winning by seven. They had an edge down low, and they took care of the ball. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do it on the road, though. This is a home revenge spot for Penn. Two teams are playing pretty good basketball in the Ivy League. That game, once again, goes at 7 o'clock Eastern night on ESPN News. So if you're searching for it, you'll have to search a little harder than normal. All right, another late-night game here at 10 o'clock Eastern to finish out our spotlight games tonight is Air Force at Wyoming. Uh, this one is on Fox Sports 1 at 10 o'clock Eastern. And uh, once again, Wyoming, the home favorite that opened minus four. It's now up to minus five, pretty much across the board. Total has dropped quite a bit. Opened 133 and a half, now down to 130 and a half, even some 130s out there. And uh, Tony, I'll start with you once again. Um, Wyoming always has a little bit of an altitude edge. So does Air Force. That's somewhat negated in this game. It's a rematch from about a month ago as well on January 17th, in which Air Force won by eight as a five-point home favorite. High scoring game though for two teams, as I said earlier, play very slow tempos, 156 points, 68 at the half. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? Well, Wyoming is very depleted in terms of their personnel because their coach basically ran off guys that didn't want to be there. I mean, that that's that's essentially what's going on with the Cowboys. Um, the, the two kids, uh, Ethan Akimpalo uh, and uh, and the other kid um, that came over from USC and were supposed to be big players on this, uh, this season squad, both didn't work out and uh, have been run off of the team. Uh, so they beat New Mexico, obviously beat them by 14. So there's some resiliency there, obviously. Um, and we'll see if, if that translates to what happens at home tonight. They've got a... a Two-game homestand with Air Force and Utah State coming up. Uh, this is a team that obviously isn't going to go anywhere unless they uh, they get hot at the right time and win the conference tournament. So we'll see um, what happens. But yeah, certainly what, what we're seeing out of Wyoming is is uh, 
last ditch effort. And Jimmy, the total is interesting to me in this one because once again, two really slow down half court teams and they soared over that total in the first meeting a month ago, 156 points. And that wasn't with overtime. That was a regulation game. Went over the 129. In fact, five and a half minutes to go in the game, they hit 129 already. That's one of the reasons you got to love overs. I know the public in general plays overs, but they are a lot safer bets sometimes because as long as the power stays on in the arena for 55 of the 60 minutes or 38 of the 40, whatever it would be in college hoops, so you cash your ticket. Um, both teams shot lights out, as would be expected, um, 55 and 53% shooting, only 51 and 53 field goal attempts. So let me know your thoughts on this game side and total, but we have seen some money coming in the under here, about a three-point drop so far. Yeah, so I definitely agree with the move. I have absolutely no interest in backing this Air Force team, especially on the road in Laramie. Uh, the Falcons have now lost seven of eight, and they haven't been very competitive at all in the losses. Uh, their closest loss in that span was by seven at home to Boise State, and they've routinely scored in the low 50s, both at home and on the road. Um you know, their only win in the last eight games for the Falcons was against New Mexico at home. And Wyoming just went to the pit and beat the Lobos by 14. So now, don't get me wrong, Wyoming isn't exactly a bet on team either right now. And the wins over UNM says more about the Lobos than it does these two teams, in my opinion. Um, Wyoming had dropped three straight prior to that win. Uh, Air Force actually plays some pretty good defense, you know, holding their opponents to 67 points per game. And the problem with backing Wyoming here is the spread is just too high to lay with a team that's in last place in the Mountain West, in my opinion. I, I, I don't want to lay that. Um, like you mentioned, this game went flying over the total the last time these teams met. But neither one of these offenses can be trusted right now. And the only way I can look is to the under. It's going to be a clear pass for me, but I, I lean under here, Steve. I agree with the market. Yeah, I agree with the under as well, Jimmy. I mean, just looking at the first meeting, these teams can't shoot any better. Not only was it 55 and 53%, but they were 40 and 38%, 16 for 41 from three-point range. Um, low turnovers, just 9 and 11 uh, 28 for 36 from the free throw line. I mean, everything was perfection. Now it did go over by 20 plus points. So even if they'd regressed a little bit, uh, but once again, we've seen some sharp money coming on the under here. I would agree with that move as well. Opened 133 and a half down to 130. And as far as the point spread, the money has come in on Wyoming going from minus four to minus five across the board. Once again, that game is on Fox sports one at 10 o'clock Eastern tonight, air force at Wyoming. All right, sir, somewhat of a light card tonight on Friday, but still some value out there. And just once again, a quick reminder, we'll be back with the last call show tomorrow on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Myself, Tony Mejia, and Jimmy Adams will all be on board to talk some Saturday college hoops. Also, I will have a college basketball top 25 video up later tonight on Friday into Saturday morning, looking at some of the big matchups. So plenty of college basketball talk this week in here on Wager Talk TV. But on the way out, I want to get some final thoughts and a best bet for the show. So Tony Mejia, Let's start with you. Uh, let us know what you got planned for this weekend at wagertalk.com and maybe a little freebie here for the show. Absolutely. All right. So uh, a 5% will be uh, available tomorrow. And uh, I have, I mean, like I, I, I should have looked this up, but I, I probably haven't lost three consecutive 5% plays in a long time. Uh, I mean, I, 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 must, I, I would assume that I've lost it some, at some point. But it, it really is something that doesn't really happen. I've lost two consecutive ones. Uh, we will bounce back tomorrow uh, with the huge card, over 150 units on the 5% place. I love you because you're my top guy. Look at this. Tell me this isn't Jeremy Sohan. And I have no <laughs> idea who this is, but he's here. And he, ha he is uh, one of my daughter's toys. But he looks exactly like Jeremy Sohan, so wanted to show that to you. Uh, my 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 top play tonight is Jalen Moore and Trey Townsend in Oakland, uh, going over the posted total in a local game against Detroit, um, over 152 points. Obviously, Detroit uh, is uh, is led by um, the uh, person that that's trying to. Please is hanging, teasing Dave, us. Mike Davis's kids. So uh, I, I think it'll be a high-scoring game tonight. 
Oakland, Detroit over 152. That line actually has dropped a teeny bit, opened as high as 153 and a half. So you're getting some line value now over the 152 range, anywhere from 152 to 153. Tony Mejia likes like Detroit Sophie, and though? Oakland. Yeah, pull it back up. You froze on us right in the middle of the best bet, but we got it out of you. The over between Detroit and Oakland. I think you're onto something. It's like a free bobblehead. Look at that. <laughs> thought it was Dennis Rodman for a second with that hair throwing me off. Hey, that's that's who he emulates. <laughs> that's right. Jimmy Adams, what are you looking at for Friday and this weekend at wagertalk.com? And a little freebie here for the show. Yeah, so like I mentioned, things are going really well in college basketball. They have all season long, uh, 70% last 10, little 4-1 and one run. We will have, uh, you know, two to three games tomorrow that I'm eyeing uh, for best bets. But let's get to a free play for you. This is my only play for tonight. It is an official 4% client play, and I really like San Jose State. Um, look, that great start from New Mexico to start the year, it's long gone. All right, this is a team, um, you know, they've now lost four straight, five of six. Um, I mentioned their only win since January 20th was, was against that bad Air Force team. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but UNM is purely a fade team for me right now. San Jose State, look, they're going to... They're not much of an offensive team, but they can get it done on defense. And this is a team that has had success at home. They're 10 and 2 at home. And uh, let me just run down those home games for you one more time in case you just tuned in. Uh, beat Utah State, the best three point shooting team in the country, 20 point win over Wyoming, 30 point win over Air Force, and a 10 point win over Fresno State. For some reason, San Jose State gets the job done at home. I think that continues tonight against the New Mexico Lobos team that is really, really struggling. Give me San Jose State on the money line, Steve. The money line, open pick them, and it's up to minus two. And Jimmy Adams says play San Jose State to win that game outright on the money line. That's a late game. One's going to 1030 Eastern tonight against New Mexico. And we're going to look at an additional play here from the gold sheet. Gold sheet play of the day. Don't forget about the gold sheet. They're chiming in here with the game from the MAC. Adam Trigger's neck of the woods here. And we're going to look at Canisius, gold sheet play of the day. They opened seven and a half. We definitely have seen some money coming on Canisius, down to six, six and a half overall now. And this uh, is a situation in which the gold sheet likes the dog. They think it's a live dog here, and we'll see if they are right. And one of the reasons they're backing them is that the last three meetings have been decided by a total of just 11 points. That should keep it here within that margin of six, six and a half. Ryder is also on an eight-game win streak. But four of those wins have come by three points or less. Once again, not winning by margin, plus a fifth came in overtime. And Ryder plays very slow. Fewer possession gives the underdog a better shot at staying in the game. So the market and the gold sheet both agree that this will be a close one tonight. Kinesis plus the six to six and a half. That goes at seven o'clock Eastern tonight on Friday. I'm going to look at one additional game on Friday. It's one of the early games, actually. It's six o'clock Eastern. It's a national TV game on CBS Sports Network. It's actually a write-in game. It's at the bottom of the schedule, but first in the start time, and that's a MAC game, a regular MAC game. Let's look at over the total between Eastern Michigan and Kent State. Eastern Michigan and Kent State over the 147. Going to give you some reasoning in just a second. Quick reminder, I will have my college basketball top 25 video later tonight on Friday into Saturday morning here on Wager Talk TV. Check that out. Also, check out Last Call at 11 a.m. Eastern Saturday morning. Several of us will be on breaking down the college basketball games before they tip off. Yet another reason to hit subscribe and hit the bell for instant alerts here on Wager Talk TV. Also, the 149 rest of February special still available. No promo code needed at wagertalk.com. And I like the over 147 between Eastern Michigan and Kent State tonight for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, I think the tempo is going to be fast. Uh, we look at Kent State this season. Overall, their tempo rating is uh, right around a 29, actually 150. So they're slightly above, above average in this game, but the team that plays really fast is Eastern Michigan, 58th fastest, and boy, are they bad on defense. No offense, Chris Allen, season ticket holder, Chris Allen for Eastern Michigan, 347 out of 363 in adjusted defensive efficiency. So I think this will be a fast-paced game with very little D, and I look for a high-scoring game. These teams played back on January 17th about a month ago. It stayed under the 148 with a 140 total, but they were terrible from three-point range. A combined 11 for 46, 26 and 21 percent. Also, Eastern Michigan just 53 percent from the free throw line of that game. Had they shot anywhere near the expected norms, that would have gone 150 or higher. I think that happens tonight. 
I like Eastern Michigan, Kent State over the total for Friday. All right, let's revisit the best bets here for the show once again for Friday night, February the 17th. Tony Mejia likes an over. He likes Detroit and Oakland over 152. Jimmy Adams likes San Jose State on the money line, minus the 125 to win outright. Myself, Steve Merrill, like Eastern Michigan and Kent State over 147. And the gold sheet spots a live dog with Canisius plus the six and a half. Once again, best bets all weekend long in college hoops, over 100 college basketball games over the next couple of days. Why not make some money with the sharpest handicapping minds out there at wagertalk.com and get the rest of February for just about $12 a day with that 149 all sports special. No promo code needed. Don't forget also last call 11 a.m. Eastern here Saturday on Wager Talk TV. Hit the bell. Hit the bell for instant alerts when you subscribe to Wager Talk TV. And don't forget to hit the like, the thumbs up, and give us some comments below. Let us know your thoughts on Tony Mejia's bobble doll. And also let us know your thoughts on the Saturday, the Friday and Saturday night college basketball car. Where are some best bets and some play on and play against teams? Thanks for watching as always. Best of luck this weekend. We'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV. While the 2022-2023 football season officially ends today on Super Bowl Sunday, for many sports betting fans, college hoops in February and March is one of the most exciting times in sports. Whether you love college hoops or just want to pad your bankroll heading into March Madness, we have the perfect special. Starting today, get the rest of February with any wager talk or sports memo handicapper for only $149 each. So to finish off February for as little as $9 per day, head over to your favorite wager talk and or sports memo handicappers page and grab this limited time offer. This offer includes not only college basketball, but also any NBA, NHL, UFC, soccer, golf, and NASCAR that your favorite wager talk and or sports memo expert handicaps. No coupon is needed. The earlier you sign up, the more days you get.